This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Right, we're now looking at treasury shares. Um, many, many years, until very, very recently, uh, relatively, um, it was illegal for a company to hold shares in itself or in its holding company. So, um, BP, British Petroleum, couldn't buy BP shares, and nor could any subsidiary of BP buy BP shares. This was against the law. You, you can't buy shares in your own company, nor shares in your parent company. Uh, so, that's where we are. As a natural precursor, it was legal to purchase its own shares. So there we, we have the, the basic law that did apply until very, very recently. Then towards the end of the last century, so towards the end of the 1900s, 1997, 1996, something like that, the law was changed and companies were allowed to purchase their own shares and cancel them. So credit cash, debit share capital, and those shares are now gone. They've just cancelled them out. So they're no longer available, for instance, to be reissued. You can create more shares, but you can't take those and, and, uh, and keep them held back so that in the event in future you want to issue them, then you already have some ready. That was not allowed. But there is a lot of commercial sense in allowing companies to own shares. The company has got to own its own shares or buy its own shares. The company's got ready funds available. It's looking for an investment. It's looking to put money into a business which it hopes is going to grow. Now surely if the directors have got confidence in their own company and there are funds available, why not buy shares in your own company? And Keep them on one side. You can't use them. You can't vote on them. They don't receive dividends, but they take them out of the out of the pool of shares. Now, so long as we continue to make nice profits and grow the company, it means there are fewer number of shares to enjoy the same uh, amount of profit. So earnings per share, which is a key ratio when looking at interpretation of financial statements, earnings per share is going to increase. The fewer number of shares there are, the lower is the denominator when you divide it into earnings divided by shares. If we reduce this denominator, then it means the earnings per share figure is going to be improved. So it does make sense, so long as the company can afford and so long as the directors are confident of A, their own ability, and B, the future, the viable future of the company, it does make sense to allow it. The basic rule established from the start is that the acquisition should be financed from distributable profits. Okay, so when we buy back shares, we're reducing the buffer fund. Well, that's potentially harmful for the creditors because in the event we then go later into a liquidation, there is the reduced buffer fund means that there's reduced assets to match that buffer fund. So out of distributable profits, when we when we take the shares out of share capital and we buy them back, we pay the former shareholders who are selling these shares, we pay them money. So cash has gone down, the share capital has gone down, but that's reduced the buffer fund. So now what we have to do is put some of the distributable profits back into the, uh, into the buffer fund. And we need to capitalize, therefore, this uh, amount of um, what would otherwise have been distributable profits equal to the nominal value of the shares purchased back has to go up into an undistributable reserve. Do you want me to put some figures on that? I shall do. I shall do. We had share cap of 500, didn't we? And then we had share premium of uh, 200. We had a revaluation reserve of 150. And then we had retained earnings of 250. Now, if I'm going to buy back some of these shares, let's say I buy back 100 of this share capital. So I'm going to take 100 off that, and that brings it down to 4. Share premium is still 2. 
Reverend, your reserves are 150, but now instead of having 850 in my buffer fund, I've only got 750. So I need to take 100 of this retained earnings and promote it, so minus 100 and plus 100 into another non-distributable reserve. So I've restored my buffer fund to 850. And taking down the retained earnings now down to 150, so I'm left again still with my 1100 net assets. Okay, so that's giving you some figures on how the redemption or the purchase of treasury shares is effective. So if the effect of this is to maintain the buffer fund, the statutorily described as share capital plus some distributable reserves, and that's what we've now done. Historically, we had to cancel these shares. No more. Most recently, a public company is now allowed to buy its own shares, and instead of cancelling them, it may now put them on one side. It can allocate them. So credit cash, debit, treasury shares. So we've, we've taken money out of cash and we've paid the former shareholders, and now we've got share capital and so we're going to take money out of the, we're going to take a balance out of share capital and put it into treasury shares. So the effect is credit cash and debit treasury shares. And it reduces the uh, amount of share capital. Here are some one liners. Shares held in treasury that are available for reissue without the normal formalities. Sorry, we can hold them in treasury and if we want to reissue them, we can. So there they are, uh, sitting in Treasury, I'm sorry, I said debit, sitting in Treasury. So we've got debit share capital and credit the Treasury shares. And if we do want to reissue them, we can debit cash credit Treasury shares, and that will give us the cash proceeds. Yeah, credit cash, debit Treasury shares. Then when we reissue them, we can credit Treasury shares and debit cash or we can create it and put them back into share capital account. These shares must have been quoted on a recognized stock exchange. It's not available for private companies. It's not available for public companies that are not quoted. It's only available for companies that are quoted or have been quoted on the stock exchange. They carry no voting rights. They're not entitled to receive dividends. And when sold, any proceeds from sale shall be treated as a realized profit. So any consideration received will go into realized profits and to um, accumulated retained earnings, basically. When cancelled, the company sends a return. If we're going to cancel them rather than hold them in treasury ready for a reissue, if we're going to cancel them instead, we must notify the registrar of companies within 28 days Telling the registrar the details of the cancellation, what it is that we have done. They may be held from initial issue. So we may have credit share capital account, but instead of issuing them all, instead of debiting cash with that, we can debit treasury shares with some of this credit share capital. And then when we issue those, then we can further credit the um, share capital account and get rid of those treasury shares. When treasury shares are cancelled, the company must send a return to the registrar, a statement of capital. And effectively, it confirms that the company continues to satisfy the minimum share capital requirements of a public company. And you remember those minimum share capital requirements. £50,000 or euro equivalent or a combination of euro and pounds. And I did ask the question, What's going to happen when Brexit comes along? Are we still going to have that euro alternative? Interesting. Watch this space, as they say.